Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time. And that whenever and wherever you happen to be on this beautiful blue-green planet as we hurtle through space together, that you are able to invite more and more mental clarity into your life with each passing day. How did you guys do over the weekend? Were you able to accept better mental clarity with the Lion's Gate portal on August 8th? I know that this was kind of a hard weekend for a lot of people. There was a lot going on energetically. We did have a C-class flare hurling our way on Saturday, but it was a very small, mild flare, and unless you were a ham radio operator or someone listening to the AM dial (laughs) when it hit, probably you didn't notice a whole lot going on. It didn't really knock out power grids or anything like that. Just a few radios, I think, were affected in the northern hemisphere, but... There's a lot of, well, shite hitting the fan, basically. This past week, a lot has come to light. And it's um, most of it disturbing. Most of it disturbing. Looks like the United States and China are in a cold war. Never thought I would uh, live to see a second cold war in my life. There was a shooter outside the White House in Washington, D.C. I don't think anyone, like, was hurt or whatever. Um, I don't know if he's shooting at the White House or just shooting in general near it or trying to hit President Trump. (laughs) Uh, Well, he missed. Better luck next time. (laughs) Just kidding. Anyway, I, I... there's so much weird stuff going on. It's, uh, a lot of people are talking about, um, the child sex trafficking, human trafficking, and it looks like, um, over 800,000 people are now going missing from the United States every year, almost 1 million people and half a million of them are children. Almost like, I think I read 486,000, something like that, our children every year have gone missing. Where the hell are they going? Who needs that many child sex slaves or child slaves? Slave labor, child labor, I don't know what the hell is going on. I am just passing this along to you guys. I don't want you to hold on to the emotion of this, but if there's something you could come up with to do about it. Let's do it. I myself, I'm at a loss. I don't know. I hear these kind of statistics and I think, thank God my youngest is about to be an adult and they've been with me the whole time. My oldest is in San Francisco. I hear from her every now and again. Um, she's really busy, um, painting murals for money and getting ready to go to university. So, Thank God she's doing good, but I don't, I I don't know what to make of all this stuff that's, that's coming around. You know, um, there was a man who did some whistleblowing and he said, I might end up dead. And if I do, I want you guys to know that I am absolutely not suicidal. And guess what? He quote unquote committed suicide right after he 
speculated that certain people like um, Tom Hanks is a pedophile and Oprah Winfrey is a pedophile, according to this guy. Now, I can't substantiate any of it. I don't know. But he put out a lot of compelling evidence and that really freaked me out and really disappointed me as far as Tom Hanks is concerned. I always thought he was a good guy. He always seemed like a good enough guy. And um, if this guy who Tom Hanks threatened through a code, (laughs) he ended up dead, you know, from a quote unquote suicide. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to think anymore. Honestly, I just don't. I just don't. But, you know, with every passing week, it comes to light that not only is there uh, in the U.S. government and in the German government and possibly in other governments and in different departments such as Child Protective Services, which do not serve anybody but themselves, they do not protect children, Uh, They are child sex traffickers as well as, um, I don't even know, uh, some other governmental agency. It just came out like a few days ago. All right. So this is absolutely insane. And if you guys want to know more about it, I know no one really wants to hear about this at all. But they have symbols I mean, it's systematic. They, they have symbols and they have a flag. They say they're quote unquote attracted to children. And it's like, oh my God, it's so sick. And they're trying to justify it. And they're trying to get into the LGBTQIA. Sorry, there's no room for a damn P. <laughs> we just don't have room for that. I mean, that's a freaking crime. And it's morally wrong and reprehensible. So, but there, all this stuff is coming to light. And what can I do about it? What can you do about it? Other than raise people's awareness and consciousness of it and make damn sure they keep their kids more than protected. I don't know what else to say. If the CPS starts sniffing around your house and you know, there's no reason for them to do so it's it might be time to move to a different state or a country I mean I did I did the minute the minute they uh I had a feeling like this this counselor I took my kids to a counselor because their father had died and there was a few issues they that I wanted them to in a formal setting start to work through some stuff so we went to a counselor because, you know, that's what a good mom does, right? And the woman who was a counselor looked at me and she said, your kids are awfully pretty. Weird fucking thing to say about my children. And then she said, I would hate to see anything happen to them. Next thing I know, she made a falsified report and CPS came around my house. And needless to say, that was on a Christmas Eve I got that first heads up that someone was looking around my house. And by January 21st, we were living in Colombia, the country. <laughs> I was like, oh, hell no. And I looked up the law offices of Vincent Gill, I think is his name. If you uh, need this information, please DM me at mermaidgirl888 on Instagram because there are ways to uh, battle CPS and win. And I'm going to tell you exactly who you need to talk to. He's got a podcast that will help you. Because I don't trust these people as far as I could throw them. They're not here to protect anybody. They're here to serve themselves. And in Detroit, right after all this hit the fan in my personal life, and did I ever answer the door when anyone knocked? Oh, hell no. Because I have a right not to answer my door. I also have a right not to answer my phone. And I have a right not to invite anybody into my home. Period. I don't give a crap who it is. Now, unless it's the police come knocking with the billy club on the door and they have a warrant. There's no, then I don't have a right to, op- I have a right not to open the door. 
and so do you. We have rights, right? But anyway, I mean, that's not what the show is about. This is Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast, and we talk about spiritual things. But it's really, really weird to me that all this stuff is suddenly coming out. And even people in the spiritual community were trying to raise consciousness about these things. Black Lives Matter, the pedophile rings. I mean, with Ghislaine Maxwell being, (laughs) she's going to get max time in prison. And the whole Epstein crap. And the fact that there's so many people being, uh, you know, on his list, in his phone. Are they people, he just got their number and... You know, they, you know, I don't know. Was it going to be a blackmail situation? Is something happened? He was going to blackmail them while you're in my phone. So, hey, fork over a couple million dollars for my defense team. And I won't name you. Or are these people really a part of it? I don't know. We don't know. No one really knows. Hopefully things will come out. And the people who need to be um, punished in society will be. I mean, for damn sure, as soon as they die, they're going to be punished. Lucifer's minions will have a field day. (laughs) I mean, it's not up for me to decide. It's up to God. It's up to their higher self and their souls. But it's freaking me out. Is, Is it freaking you guys out? I've gotten more and more mental clarity on things like this. And now, and now the, um, money experts are saying our money is going to go down buy gold, buy silver. Gold just went up to $2,300 per ounce. I remember when it went up to $360 per ounce and that was like, oh my God, like 20 years ago. I remember that being such a big deal. Now it's $2,300. I can't even afford an ounce of gold. That's crazy, right? So buy silver, buy gold, whatever you can. Money is not going to be as, uh, it's, it's possible what's going on in the United States might be what happened in Venezuela. I mean, <laughs> last I heard a bag of rice that feeds four people one meal barely was $1,000 in Venezuela. People's land was taken away, their livestock their crops were burned. I mean, you know that in many parts of the United States, it is illegal, illegal to collect rainwater to have a garden. It is illegal to grow food to eat in your front yard. If you don't believe me, look it up on Google. Seriously, do a search or any other search engine. You have to use Google, but... I mean, these things are really, really crazy. There is some really crazy shite going down right now. On a global scale and on a statewide scale in every state. On a governmental scale, national scale in the U.S. I mean, this stuff is crazy. There was a man, I think I mentioned it on Friday, that he predicted accurately over the course of like 30 or 40 years every president that won he accurately predicted and he has hopefully accurately predicted that Trump will no longer be in the White House I mean maybe there's a first time for everything maybe it's gonna be wrong but I mean I think he's right it seems to me completely insane and the only way he would win as if he cheats and he's already planning on cheating the US Postal Service um, has now been caught that they in the last election changed ballots I think it was in the last election I think now they're doing it too again you know anyone who said they're going to vote for Democrat they erased it and put check the mark you know marks the box for Republican This is absolutely crazy, all the corruption. There have been gangs of cops, I mean, caught on on video smoking weed, 
breaking the law left and right, beating people up, killing people. I think in New Jersey, I think in New York City, I mean, don't quote me on that, I can't remember exactly where, but um, I think in California, the military just did a massive operation found in underground, in underground bunkers, thousands of children. I mean, that was last year. I don't know about you guys, but this has been really, really hard to face. We can't just ignore it anymore. And we can't just really do anything about it either. The only thing we can do is just keep raising everyone's consciousness. And the best we could do is keep our own children safe, our own grandchildren safe, our neighbor kids safe. And just do our best. But I think that storing food is a good option, good idea. There are ways to grow food on your walls. If you have a self-facing window inside your house, you know, that gets good sunlight. Um, There are, are vertical gardens that you can create in a very tiny space. Even if you live in a one bedroom apartment, even if you live in a studio apartment, there are things that you could do that will not include growing in your front yard. I I just feel like food shortages are starting to happen around the world with the locusts, with the extreme weather, extremely hot or extremely cold. There's been a lot of droughts. And then in the places where there is no droughts, there are a lot of floods. Either way, it's not good for the plants. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the end of the world, guys, but... I'm also pretty sure that there's ways for us to to survive it, basically. There's ways to navigate all the things that are happening. And I don't know about you guys, but I've had an extreme amount of mental clarity uh, since the Lion's Gate, more so, but in the past week or two. And I wanted to ask if... You know, if you guys want to discuss it with me, just write me, DM me on Instagram at mermaidgirl888, as I said earlier. But have you noticed that you've had a greater amount of mental clarity? Have you gotten greater insights as to the people you've had difficulty with in your life? I've had uh, communication issues with a couple people in my life, and in the past week or so, I've had a lot of aha moments as far as understanding what the uh, problem was, what the obstacle or hurdle to understanding their motivation, to understanding my resistance to them, to understanding um, who they really are, from understanding uh, what these people's... um, what their purpose was in my life as, as far as what they came here to teach me. And I've had clarity as far as what their motivation was. And as far as what I thought their motivation was. And a lot of it goes back to what we learned in A Course in Miracles when I feel that I'm attacked it's you know basically because I'm attacking myself or I think I'm attacked and therefore that's my experience right but when I know that I'm not attacked I won't be anymore I've had a lot of mental clarity as far as these sorts of things like just issues I've had with people people that I had in my life people that are no longer my life people that are still in my life but just the communication breakdown and the disconnect as to what they wanted to communicate, how they were acting and reacting to me and how I was acting and reacting. It's just all of the walls and the barriers of understanding that were up and blocking my view have come crashing down in the past like couple weeks. 
I have noticed that my mental clarity has gone gone up. I understand things on a greater level than I ever did before. I'm seeing things on clearer levels than I ever did before, and I'm really grateful for that. So I want you to ask, like I do, for mental clarity. Every day I say, God, show me things with greater and greater and ever-increasing clarity. Thank you. Amen. You can say, Goddess, Jah, Ra, Yahweh, Jehovah, whatever. Whatever you say for God. Allah. It doesn't have to be what I say. You should have your own voice when it is concerning your own spirituality. But yeah, um, a lot of clarity has come my way. And a lot of strange things have come my way too that were confusion. And I don't know what this is exactly. Some things are like paths towards a brighter future have become um, paved greater. I don't know how to say it, but have been opened up to me. More things have opened up. But at the same time, some other strange things have happened. And I think I had told you guys about the uh, uh, the uh, orders that I placed in June. And the round and round and round and round. I mean, I feel like I've been in a, in a mental boxing match with the customer service at Wish.com for like six weeks. Because the person who said, hey, I have a business. Have your stuff sent. You could trust me. Have your stuff sent to where my business is. No problem. I asked him. I wrote him. We had conversation. We had conversation over the phone. Everything was great. And it's okay. I'm going to trust you. Everything's great. And I made my order. And I said, I got 25 things coming your way. And he says, great. Thank you for letting me know. And a week later, he says, oh, and by the way, we have a new address. And you have five days to get your stuff. Otherwise, we won't be accepting it. I'm like, wait, what, what? I trusted you, dude. <laughs> and then, so I wrote him. He's like, well, I'm a, I'm a solutions man. Don't worry. I still have my own uh, personal stuff going there. So I'll just have them accept yours too. Well, through the things that showed up, they s- denied and sent back to China. So it's taken me all week. <laughs> It's taken me, well, now it's been like five days. It took me five days to get the wish people to see that it was sent back to China. Quit telling me it's going to be here any day now when on your website it says that five days ago they denied it and sent it back to China. And in the meantime, I had to call the guy and then he... He made it a point to let me know that it cost him $50 to receive my things. And I'm like, but you know what? I hope I'm going to have faith that he's not going to charge me that money. It's not my fault. He changed his address, right? This is your service. This is your business. What you're providing for people as a service. And now all my things are going to be denied after I waited two whole months. So that was a weird thing that went on. And it seems like very much the miscommunication and the transportation of the objects that I wanted, including a couple of hoodies that were going to keep me warm in the cold, 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 cold weeks we've been having. So I, it just seems to me like that was a Mercury retrograde type of thing. Even though we're outside of Mercury retrograde, we're now Mercury direct. We're outside of the shadow period. It's not only the planet went direct, but the shadow went direct. It's like everything is fine. And yet I'm still having these kind of weird ass issues. So that was another, that was one thing. And then there's another weird obstacle that happened um, with my TESOL training, T-E-S-O-L, which is, um, I think it's teaching English to students of another language. I don't know. Anyway, it's just basically people, we used to call this ESL, English as a Second Language Students, 
um, just teaching English, basically. That's all I wanted to do. And so I looked into, like six months ago, I looked into a bunch of different programs. And I found one for like $2,000. I found one for like six or $700. I found one for 800. I found one for 400. I found one for 269. I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Then I found one for 40 bucks. I'm like, Hey, and I went ahead and enrolled my son and myself. And the next day he's like, what the hell are you doing? That's can't be real. That can't be right. So he had me doubting myself and I'm like, but you know what? I think he's on to something. <laughs> and I started looking into it and there, there's so many English mistakes, even in their own, um, text that people were complaining. I found thousands of complaints immediately got my money back. Thank you, God. And <laughs> thank you for my son with his intelligence and everything. And he said, why don't you just look on Coursera? I'm like, ah, oh, Coursera. Duh. I've taken classes from Duke University and University of Maryland, Yale University. I think I was enrolled in something from Harvard, Barcelona, University of Barcelona, Leiden, University of Leiden. I've taken a lot of classes over the years with them. Why the heck did I not consider that maybe I could get T-cell training or TOEFL training or TEFL? You know, one of those three. So, oh my gosh, my son's so smart. All right, so I looked into this a few months back and lo and behold, he was right. This Arizona State University, if I just take certification uh, level one, certification level two, bada boom, bada bing, I'm going to have my test cell certification. And each level was six weeks long. And they recommend five to seven hours per week. And I thought, well, I could step that up. Boom, boom, boom. I could get it done in a couple weeks. So I enrolled myself in the first class and I talked to somebody from from Coursera. Sure. All right. As long as I, if I could get it done in a week, I will not be charged. As soon as I finish it, it closes out and my seven day trial is over. I mean, you know, like I could, if I could get in under seven days, I don't have to pay the 50 bucks. Oh my God, such a deal. So I went ahead and did that. I got my first six weeks worth of work done in six days and I worked my butt off. It's all I did every day, all day for a whole week. I was exhausted at the end of that. And after eight days, they freaking charged me $50 and I called them. I'm like, Hey, uh, on your website, it says that if I finish it in under the time, I won't be charged. And I finished it three days ago and you guys charged me. And they said, Oh, sorry for the confusion. Don't worry. We're going to give you your money back, which is good. Good customer service. Awesome. And they said, but you can't get your certification until you do level two. And I said, okay, I will do level two. I want you to do level two. And they said, we need your financial information. So I'm like, I freaking already gave it to you. And you've already charged me and I already got my money back. Cause I was done within a week, but level two. Okay, fine. We'll start over. And I finished that. I finished it all in under seven days. And I thought, okay, good. I'm done. I'm going to get my, you know, I got 12 weeks worth of, of uh, classes done in two weeks. I worked my ass off, but I did it. Yay. This is good. And then it says, well, you have to do the capstone project one and the capstone project two, each of which are six weeks long, another 12 weeks worth of work. Same, pretty much the same amount. I mean, I could zip through it. Great. So two more weeks, I'm going to be delayed. And today I went to cancel the seven day trial because I see the writing on the wall. <laughs> I go to the capstone and says, what's your financial information a third time? Okay. So they told me the specialization is 49 95 per month until you're finished. But apparently it's per class and there's four classes in the specialization. And then today, oh my God. I feel like you guys, I hopped a timeline and now there are eight 
courses I have to complete at six weeks each. That's 48 weeks. When I was first told this was going to be um, 24 weeks. So it went from this could take you six months at five to seven hours a week to this is 48 weeks, which is, um, hello, almost a fucking year. And as um, uh, most of you are aware, if you've been with me for a while, you know that my, my money that I get paid, death benefits (laughs) to raise my children ends in two whole months. And yet now I have like 24 more weeks of this. I'm like, okay, things are not computing correctly. (laughs) So my whole day was spent instead of doing my work, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with the university or, you know, Arizona state university through Coursera. It's like, um, when I first looked into this six months ago, there was only two classes and each class was six weeks long. And then once I enrolled, it was four classes sit time, six weeks each. And now there's eight courses times six weeks each. Do you see the problem here? Right. So I don't know about you guys, but there have been a lot of strange communication breakdowns as if Mercury retrograde is still happening. There have been a lot of um, people changing things at the last minute. I feel like I'm being gaslighted by Arizona State University at this point. You would think it would be the uh, University of Phoenix at this point. (laughs) They've been in a lot of trouble with... um, teaching and teaching and teaching things and then people going to be say a nurse or a phlebotomist or what have you and literally knowing nothing when they get to where they're going (laughs) like oh wow here are thousands of hours and thousands of dollars later and I don't know what the hell I'm doing I just wasted years of my life can't get the job I wanted because they're throwing words at me I've never heard. I should have known for years. That's what happened to my ex-boyfriend. He had gone, he was an EMT. And he was taking some kind of, I think, nursing training or something. And he was just like, they didn't teach me a damn thing. And he was in the last time I talked to him was years ago. He was in the middle of this massive lawsuit. He was my first boyfriend from from high school. I'm still friends with him. You know, since I was 16 years old, I've known him. But um, I don't know what is going on with this. I I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. I know it's supposed to be um, a 150-hour course. And I think today I read it was a 200-hour course. So I'm like, did they just add 50 hours to it over the weekend? And they're acting like we should have already known that. And the, in this, I, this customer service rep says, well, you're supposed to be, um, you're supposed to finish the eight classes in order to finish your specialization. I'm like, last week, the specialization was only four courses long. I went from, you know, teach English now, test all certification one to teach English now, test all certification two, because your app makes you go in order. So makes sense from one to two. Now today I look and I have completed class one and class five. And all of a sudden there's a class two, three, and four that was nowhere to be seen one week ago. So I feel like I'm being gaslighted. (laughs) Like I'm a Virgo, damn it. I would have gone in order. Duh. (laughs) Right. So I don't know if you guys are having these kinds of weird issues with random various companies. If are we hopping timelines where suddenly life is more and more and more complicated in every possible area of life? I don't know. It's very, very strange. But I feel like things have gotten excessively complicated in the world just almost like overnight. We weren't in a cold war with China a week ago. And now we are. India and China are again ready to have like a war with each other. And last week they both sent up freaking 
missions to Mars. <laughs> you can't run away from your problems. I'm sorry, but you can't run away from your problems. You made a, a mess of Earth and now you get to go to Mars? I don't think so. Stay home and clean your room, China. Stay home and clean your room, India. <laughs> you know? You made a mess of your country, so you think you get just to, what, fly away from the planet? I, I don't, I, I just feel like there's no good can come from this. God put you on the planet for a reason. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, it's like, I don't know. This whole mission to Mars thing just is freaking me out. SpaceX launched a bunch of um, rockets more into space, added a lot more satellites, like 60 more this weekend. <sighs> They're getting ready to launch a mission to Mars too. And they are actually a lot more efficient than NASA, which is very odd. I think NASA just sent another thing to Mars as well. And I think that maybe they're getting ready to, or they did. I don't know if SpaceX did send something this past weekend, but it was past week. But like three or four agencies have sent missions to Mars. Over the weekend, Ian Punnett on Coast to Coast AM talked to a guy about um, the preppers and the underground bunker people. And it's more and more and more just people like you and me becoming preppers, not even calling themselves preppers. Just, oh, well, maybe we should probably see the writing on the wall and freeze dry some food. Let's start canning. Let's start maybe buying a little bit more toilet paper and rice and beans and canned food. Let's uh, maybe have six months to two years worth of food on hand per person people are starting to think about these things and over the weekend Ian Punnett on Sunday was talking about how the Pentagon talked about we've got a spacecraft that was recovered after it's crashed and it's not of this earl world it's not of this earth <laughs> earl <laughs> it's not of this worth earl what no I'm just kidding Ugh. so if the Pentagon's mentioning that, the Navy and the Air Force have mentioned, oh well, yeah, we've seen some things. Mass disclosure is about to happen, and it's about to happen in such a big freaking way that the governments won't have anything to do with it. Ian Punnett was mentioning that there's a bunch of UFOs around the moon. My son saw them. My friend in Canada saw them. My friend in Canada's neighbors saw them. Lots of UFOs around this day. Over the weekend, I was abducted yet one more time. And I took a picture of some apparent needle marks in my hand. That I went to bed. They weren't there. Woke up. Oh, my God. Needle marks in my hand. So I took a picture of it. I haven't put it on Instagram yet, but I will sometime in this coming week when the C-class flares, just a C-1 very tiny flare came off of little sunspot AR-2770 it was coming out of what looked like appeared to be the face of a lion on Lions Gate, August 8th, which is a portal. I got a picture. I downloaded it. I hope you guys are going to be able to see it. When I put that up this coming week on Instagram, I want you to check it out because the sun itself had the shape and image of a female lion without the mane on its surface when it released the C-class flare. I thought that was very, very telling. Shows, of course, saw the soul of the sun. He's a real being. He's really alive. And he knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're feeling. And he's sending energy our way. 
so much is going on, not only in our states, our countries, around the world, but also in the cosmos. Everything is alive and electric, and everything is working in our favor in spite of all the crazy crap going on in this world. I mean, I'm sad about the things that are happening, but at the same time, I'm glad that it's all coming to light, aren't you? Once it comes to light and we're all aware, that is a consciousness-raising experiment. And the people are being caught now that are doing these horrible and heinous acts. They're being called out. And eventually, everything is going to be okay. I know it. I hope you know it too. I'm sorry if I told you anything that was shocking or upsetting to your system. Remember to take a deep breath and just... Just let it go. Do that often. There are many resources. Rest, relaxation, Reiki is a great source on YouTube. There are a lot of binaural beats, isochronic tones subliminals, meditations, you name it. Anything's going to help you relax and feel good and get rid of anxiety in case anything I said brought you anxiety. I mean, this stuff brings me anxiety for sure. I mean, it's no easy task for me to think about it, let alone talk about it. But it's things that we need to do. We need to raise our consciousness and know the good and the bad. You know, love people warts and all don't have to invite them for dinner you know it's crazy I you know I don't know just lots of weird miscommunication unclarity um a lot of weird surprises like you know in the case of my class that I mean when I first started it was two then it went to four now it's eight I'm like what the hell? Like next week, am I gonna find out there's 20 extra six week classes I need to take? You know, to get the, to, you know, it was a hundred hour training and now it's 150. Now it's like freaking 200. I, it's like, what the hell is happening? I, I, I don't know. I mean, in order for me to get a job, I only need to take a hundred hour certification training, but this is the only one that I can afford. <laughs> and it's the best one out there supposedly but I'm like blown away it is supposed to be six months and suddenly it's a year long it's like and they're acting like I was just the dumb one that I didn't see all of the specializations and I'm like no y'all changed it I mean I read the course description like six times I'm a Virgo I'm very thorough you know what I mean Oh my God. Anyway, I don't know if you guys are having these kinds of things happen. When people are changing the rules and the goalposts and then going, Oh, well, you just didn't look into it good enough. It's like, Oh, well, your app just didn't work. Jerk off. You know? <laughs> it's like, or maybe you all changed it and you don't know that you changed it. You didn't really look into it enough and you made me feel bad, but I'm not dumb and I don't do things out of order. I'm a Virgo. I'm very anal retentive about these things. I know what goes where. (laughs) I know the alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, not A, F. (laughs) Another weird thing happened too. My son and I were looking at buying uh, clothes on Wish and I said, oh darn it, I need a measuring tape. I was going to measure my son's shoulders with to, to see what, what size jacket to buy him because Asian sizes run small. And I pulled out the measuring tape and I said, well, this can't be. And he's like, what? And I go, I think your shoulders are wider than 14 inches across. This is insane. And yet this is what the measuring tape says. I'm like, wait a minute. These inches look really, really big. And I flipped it over and I said, well, this makes sense in, in centimeters. And I'm like, this, okay, this is weird. I'm like, well, either the advertisement's wrong or this tape measure's wrong. I think this is a tape measure. So I did the math on the calculator, and it turns out that my son's shoulders are like, 
closer to 20 inches wide versus 14. And how the hell? I don't know. It's like breakdown in communication, breakdown in technology, breakdown in caring. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, it was saying that an inch on this measuring tape was like three and a half centimeters. It's like, no, it's always been 2.54 cent. Did I hype, hop into the frickin' timeline? Am I going crazy? I mean, these kinds of weird things. I'm not just being a nitpicky Virgo here, right? Am I right? <laughs> if you guys have had these things, I want to know if you've had weird things like this happen in the past week or two. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Like maybe, maybe you've been driving on a street that's been 35 miles an hour for, you know, the past 15 years. And suddenly this week it's 30 miles an hour and you get a ticket and you're like, what the hell? Like those kinds of things. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's some weird shit going down. We're in the fifth dimension for sure. Maybe it's that. Maybe we keep hopping timelines. But it's all very weird lately. Very, very weird. All right, let me see how much time I've got here. I want to make certain. Oh, and of course, this doesn't show. All right, here we go. 45 minutes. All right, I want to make sure I have enough time to get into the space weather stuff. So I don't know if you guys have had this kind of stuff happen. <laughs> Where you know something to be true and everything you did about the one thing was 100% what you're plan Like, just this class I planned and planned. And all of a sudden, everything is different. And I'm like, what, what the hell? My son and I have had a couple moments in the past week in which he had an absolute memory of something and I had an absolute memory of completely different scenario about the surrounding the same exact thing and it's like what how how are we having completely different memories are we from different timelines you know is it is it you is it me is it you <laughs> we've had a lot of these moments lately like there's some stuff going weird our uh, little creek out back was always just normal looking in color and all of a sudden it was um, with a bunch of rain it turned kind of brown which is normal and now it's this weird turquoise color and it's like is this runoff? How is it suddenly this color? I've lived here now going on four months and it was uh, the water was clear looking except during rainy times and now it's this weird turquoise blue and it's like this is really odd that wasn't like that before planet X hunter he's going crazy above his sky looks like there's a planet right next to our planet he's like I feel like I could take a hot air balloon and go land on another planet just on the other side of these clouds it's freaking him out Anyway, let's see what's going on. Speaking of clouds, let's go to spaceweather.com. Let's kind of, we'll figure out some scientific stuff. The solar wind speed right now is only 300.4 kilometers per second. It's considerably lower. A week and a half ago, it was like 680. About a week ago, actually. Um, all right. We still have a sunspot AR2770. It's in a state of accelerating decay. So, it's getting ready to go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for the C-Class flare. Yay. <laughs> Crazy. It's getting ready to go. Uh, the Perseid meteor shower has been intensifying. Last night, NASA all-sky cameras recorded 30 Perseid fireballs over the U.S. This is a sign that the Earth is moving deeper into the debris stream of the Comet 109P, also known as Swift Tuttle. 
Now, the meteor shower is expected to peak during the next three days, from August 11th to the 13th, with rates several times higher than last night's. The best time to look at the meteor shower is during the hours before your local sunrise, when the constellation Perseus is up there high in the sky. So, just wanted to let you know about that. And apparently Solar Cycle 25 is coming to life. There's a picture of what they're calling a seething, a sunspot seething with magnetic activity. And that's the one that's getting ready to break down and go away. But before it does, it's seething with magnetic activity. And it looks like a freaking eyeball on the sun. And when I put that picture up, you guys are going to see it. They, they, NASA had taken a picture of the sun and it was in a cobalt blue color or kind of a turquoisey blue color actually but I swear it just looks like there's a lion on the sun with its eyes and everything it was very strange I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add it I'll let you guys know later in the week when I've gotten that up because it's very very odd so okay uh, it says it's talking about the C-class flare etc. over the weekend. If you want to read the article, it's short. It's on spaceweather.com if you're interested. The Ulu neutron counts coming out of Ulu, Finland um, are high. We're at 10.1% today of the space age average. And this is what, this is basically a measurement of cosmic radiation coming our way from the cosmos themselves, not from the sun which is a whole nother thing. So we got a lot of lot of a uh, lot of radiation coming our way. Now, as far as the corona holes are concerned, right now there are no significant corona holes on the earth's side of the sun. So, hey, no news is good news, guys, right? All right, according to the All Sky Fireball Network and the NASA All Sky cameras, that scan the skies above the United States for meteoritic fireballs. Well, today they reported 53, oh my God, 53 fireballs exploded over the United States. 30 of them were part of the Perseids meteor shower. 23 of them were just random sporadic fireballs. 53. We haven't seen a number that high in a while. So that's pretty crazy, isn't it? According to the Schumann Resonance of uh, DisclosureNews.it coming out of Italy, they had both a 43 as well as a 32 hertz frequency um, blip or blurb <laughs> on the Schumann Resonance scale. And we don't have up to date news from HeartMath.org, but we can see where they were at to days ago at the 2300 hour on August 8th which is about a day, day and a half ago and this is what was going on then in California the hertz frequency was 118 Hofuf Saudi Arabia was at 0 Lithuania was at 142 hertz frequency Alberta, Canada was at 255 hertz frequency and Northland, New Zealand was at 59 hertz frequency. And last but not least, Tulului, South Africa, they were at 101 hertz frequency. And now this is, you know, like a day and a half ago. And one, two, three, four, five out of the six registered above 40 hertz, which means they're well into. The fifth dimension. I don't know why Saudi Arabia's um, equipment is showing zero. Maybe it's off or maybe it really is zero. I don't know. It's very odd. Um, It's very odd that. All right. Moving right along. Uh, Pretty much every day we've been reading A Course in Miracles. Today is no different. We are in Lesson 352. In the Foundation for Inner Peace um, website, which of course is acim.org. 
You can also go to any A Course in Miracle app and pick them out, and you could read along in the app as well. All right, so Lesson 352 states, Judgment and love are opposites. From one come all the sorrows of the world, but from the other comes the peace of God himself. Judgment and love are opposites. From one come all the sorrows of the world. From one, or I mean, but from the other comes the peace of God himself. Forgiveness looks on sinlessness alone and judges not. Though this I come to you, judgment will bind my eyes and make me blind. Yet love reflected in forgiveness here reminds me you have given me a way to find your peace again. I am redeemed when I elect to follow in this way. You have not left me comfortless. I have within me both the memory of you and one who leads me to it. Father, I would hear your voice and find your peace today, for I would love my own identity and find it in the memory of you. Judgment and love are opposites. From one come all the sorrows of the world, but from the other comes the peace of God himself. Of course, they spell the word peace, P-E-A-C-E. So, like pause, like peace. All right, that was lesson 352. (coughs) If you want to look it up for yourself later on. And there you have it. I'm going to take a quick break, guys. (coughs) Excuse me. And when I come back, you are going to um, get into the Kaibalion with me. This is part three. This is a, a strange little book that I read years and years ago, but it's straight up, they say it's not metaphysics. I'm telling you, from my perspective, it's definitely metaphysics. But no matter what it is, no matter what you call it, it is deep, very profound, very spiritual, and will give you a greater insight as to the workings and inner workings of the universe and the nature of God himself right after this these messages so stick stick around we're going to read the kaiba lion next I was born this month and I wanted to do something for you guys. Normally, my readings are $111 for a tarot reading or a psychic mediumship reading. That means I can basically help you talk to any of your deceased loved ones, your higher self, even God himself, or any of the ascended masters that you've always wanted to have a conversation with. What you need to do is just contact me at mermaidgirl888 on Instagram. Just direct message me and let me know you're interested in having the birthday special $88 reading. That is $33 less than my normal price. And as always, my cloud readings are also available at $33. So there you have it. Happy August. I look forward to hearing from you. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast 
right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the anchor.fm app right on my cell phone and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more. And so can you, you can make money from your podcast also, and there's no minimum requirement. You get paid from your very first listener. It is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So please, if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own, do not hesitate to start with Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. All right, guys. So, um... In the continuing saga of this, during the break, I got an email from Coursera from a guy who says he's going to be taking over for the last two women that tried to explain this to me. So he's handling two support tickets at once. (laughs) And he says, sorry for the confusion. There are three specializations you have to complete to complete the one specialization. Wait, what? (laughs) I swear to God, I'm being gaslighted here. (laughs) What? I'm like, wow, because I was told two weeks ago there was one specialization. And he says, yeah, there's three now. What? But he doesn't say now as in, yeah, we changed it 48 hours ago, but like... I'm the idiot that didn't see it, even though I, yeah, I've been researching this for months. There was never eight courses before. In fact, when I first looked into it six months ago, there was two. And then there was four. Two weeks ago. <laughs> now there's eight courses of six weeks each. And he's saying there's three parts to the specialization, I guess, or three specializations. Oh my God. (sighs) Do you guys ever get the feeling that we're dead and like in hell? (laughs) Oh my God. I mean, this is like a nightmare. (laughs) Oh, wow. You think you finished those 23 lessons? Well, guess what? (laughs) That's only half done. There's 46. And then you get to 40. Yay, six more to go. Oh, well, did you know that each of those lessons are six lessons each? And each of the six lessons lasts 30 hours each? (laughs) Oh, my God. Another weird thing that happened this morning is that my son and I both woke up with styes in our eyes. And it's like I just cleaned all of my bedding. It was absolutely clean. I've been keeping everything swept and everything dusted. And I don't know what happened. I, I think I might have touched the dog and I accidentally touched my eye on the way to washing my hands, maybe. When I touched one of the wolf dogs. And I know my son is petting the wolf dog, so something in their fur could cause a sty. And my old, the old wolf I used to have, um, if I touched him and touched my eye, man, it's like instant sty. It's like, Err! he used to lick me in the eye. I swear to God, this wolf just wanted to mess with me. <laughs> I mean, he's just showing affection, but he didn't know it was going to cause an infection. Oh my God, affection, infection. Ugh. Yeah, I swear like I'm in hell. I'm in rhyming hell right now. (laughs) Oh my God. But how weird is that, right? I mean, I woke up with an infection in my eye. 
which I haven't had a sty in my eye in like five or six years, I don't think. And here my son had the same infection in the same eye. I'm like, how the hell is that happening? Our bedrooms are on two separate floors of this house. It's not like, you know, something that in the air in his room would be that, you know, here, I don't, it's just, everything is so strange. Weird stuff like that. Like, what? <laughs> what are the odds? It's very, very strange. Anyway, we're going to get into it, guys. We're reading The Kaiba Lion by Three Initiates. We don't know who they are. <laughs> and The Kaiba Lion, if you want to look it up yourself, it's on Gutenberg.org for free because it's over 80 years old. In fact, it was written in 1912. And Kaiba Lion is spelled K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N. The Kaiba Lion by three initiates. And the word three is spelled out T-H-R-E-E, not the number three. I mean, it is the number three, but spelled out. Anyway, um, all right. Where we left off last week is we were on chapter six, The Divine paradox. So here we go. The half-wise, recognizing the comparative unreality of the universe, (laughs) imagine that they may defy its laws. Such are vain and presumptuous fools, and they are broken against the rocks and torn asunder by the elements by reason of their folly. The truly wise, knowing the nature of the universe, use law against laws, the higher against the lower, and by the art of alchemy transmute that which is undesirable into that which is unworthy, and thus triumph. Mastery consists not in abnormal dreams, visions, and fantastic imaginings or living, But in using the higher forces against the lower, escaping the pains of the lower planes by vibrating on the higher. Transmutation, not presumptuous denial, is the weapon of the master, the Kaiba Lion. This is the paradox of the universe, resulting from the principle of polarity which manifests when the all begins to create. Hearken to it, for it points the difference between half-wisdom and wisdom. While the infinite all, the universe, its laws, its powers, its life, its phenomena, are as things witnessed in the state of meditation or dream, yet to all that is finite, The universe must be treated as real, and life in action and thought must be based thereupon accordingly, although with an ever understanding of the higher truth, each according to its own plane and laws. Were the all to imagine that the universe were indeed reality, Then woe to the universe, for there would be then no escape from lower to higher, divine word. Then would the universe become a fixed city, and progress would become impossible. And if man, owing to half-wisdom, acts and lives and thinks of the universe as merely a dream akin to his own finite dreams, then indeed does it so become for him and like a sleepwalker, he stumbles ever around and around in a circle, making no progress and being forced into an awakening at last by his falling, bruised and bleeding over the natural laws which he ignored. Keep your mind ever on the star but let your eyes watch over your footsteps, lest you 
fall into the mire by reason of your upward gaze. Remember the divine paradox that while the universe is not, still it is. Remember ever the two poles of truth, the absolute and the relative. Beware of half-truths. What hermetists know as the law of paradox is an aspect of the principle of polarity. The hermetic writings are filled with references to the appearance of the paradox in the consideration of the problems of life and being. The teachers are constantly warning their students against the error of omitting the other side of any question. And their warnings are particularly directive to the problems of the absolute and the relative, which perplex all students of philosophy and which cause so many to think and act contrary to what is generally known as common sense. And we caution all students to be sure to grasp the divine paradox of the absolute and relative, lest they become entangled in the mire of the half-truth. With this in view, this particular lesson has been written. Read it carefully. The first thought that comes to the thinking man after he realizes the truth that the universe is a mental creation of the all is that the universe and all that it contains is a mere illusion, an unreality, against which idea his instincts revolt. And this, like all the great truths, must be considered both from the absolute and the relative points of view. From the absolute viewpoint, of course, the universe is in the nature of an illusion, a dream, a phantasmagoria, as compared to the all in itself. We recognize this even in our ordinary view, for we speak of the world as a fleeting show that comes and goes, is born and dies for the element of impermanence and change, finiteness and unsubstantiality, unsubstantiality, sorry, finiteness and unsubstantiality must ever be connected with the idea of a created universe when it is contrasted with the idea of the all. No matter what may be our beliefs concerning the nature of both, philosopher, metaphysician, scientist, and theologian all agree upon this idea, and the thought is found in all forms of philosophical thought and religious conceptions, as well as in the theories of the respective schools of metaphysics and theology. So, the hermetic teachings do not preach the unsubstantiality of the universe in any stronger terms than those more familiar to you. Although their presentation of the subject may seem somewhat more startling, anything that has a beginning and an ending must be, in a sense, unreal and untrue. And the universe comes under the rule in all schools of thought from the absolute point of view. There is nothing real except the all, no matter what terms we may use in thinking of or discussing the subject. Whether the universe be created of matter, or whether it be a mental creation in the mind of the all, it is unsubstantial, non-enduring, a thing of time, space, and change. We want you to realize this fact thoroughly before you pass judgment on the hermetic conception of the mental nature of the universe. Think over any and all of the other conceptions and see whether this be not true of them. 
but the absent point of view shows merely one side of the picture. The other side is a relative one. Absolute truth has been defined as things as the mind of God knows them. While relative truth is things as the highest reason of man understands them. And so well to the all, the universe must be unreal and illusionary. A mere dream or a result of meditation, nevertheless to the finite minds forming a part of the universe and viewing it through mental faculties, faculties, the universe is very real indeed and must be so considered. In recognizing the absolute view, we must not make the mistake of ignoring or denying the facts and phenomena of the universe as they present themselves to our mortal faculties. We are not the all, remember? To take familiar illustrations, we all recognize the fact that matter exists to our senses. We will fare badly if we do not. And yet even our finite minds understand the scientific dictum that there is no such thing as matter from a scientific point of view. That which we call matter is held by merely an aggregation of atoms, which atoms themselves are merely a grouping of units of force, called electrons or ions, vibrating and in constant circular motion. We kick a stone and we feel the impact. It seems to be real, notwithstanding that we know it to be merely what we have stated above. But remember that our foot, which feels the impact by means of our brains, is likewise matter. So constituted of electrons, and for that matter, so are our brains. And at the best, if it were not by reason of our mind, we would not know the foot or stone at all. Then again, the idea, ideal of the artist or sculptor, which he is endeavoring to reproduce in stone or on canvas, seems very real to him. So do the characters in the mind of the author or dramatist, which he seeks to express in that others may recognize them. And if this be true in the case of our finite minds, what must be the degree of reality in the mental image created in the mind of the infinite? Oh, friends, to mortals, this universe of mentality is very real indeed. It is the only one we can even know, even though we rise from plane to plane, higher and higher in it. To know otherwise but actual experience we must be the all itself. It is true that the higher we rise in the scale and near to the mind of the Father we reach, the more apparent becomes the illusory nation of the finite things. But not until the all finally withdraws us into itself does the vision actually vanish. So, we need not dwell upon the feature of illusion. Rather, let us, recognizing the real nature of the universe, seek to understand its mental laws and endeavor to use them to the best effect in our upward progress through life. As we travel from plane to plane of being, the laws of the universe are nonetheless iron laws and are bound by them. What is in the infinite mind of the all is real. In a second degree only to the reality itself which is vested in the nature of the all. So do not feel insecure or afraid 
we are all held firmly in the infinite mind of the all and there is not to hurt us or for us to fear there is no power outside of the all to affect us so we may rest calm and secure there is a world of comfort and security in this realization once when once attained then calm and peaceful do we sleep rocked in the cradle of the deep resting safely on the bosom of the ocean of the infinite mind which is the all the all in the all indeed do we live and move and have our being matter is nonetheless matter to us while we dwell on the plane of matter although we know it to be merely an aggregation of electrons or particles of force vibrating rapidly and gyrating around each other in the formations of atoms the atoms in turn vibrating and gyrating forming molecules which latter in turn form the larger masses of matter nor does matter become less matter when we follow the inquiry still further and learn from the hermetic teachings that the force quote unquote force of which the electrons are but merely are but units in is merely a manifestation of the mind of the all and like all else in the universe is purely mental in its nature while on the plane of matter we must recognize its phenomena we may control matter as all masters of higher or lesser degree do but we do so by applying the higher forces we commit a folly when we attempt to deny the existence of matter in the relative aspect we may deny its mastery over us and rightly so but we should not attempt to ignore it in its relative aspect at least so long as we dwell upon its plane nor do the laws of nature become less constant or effective when we know them likewise to be merely mental creations they are in effect on the various planes we overcome the lower laws by applying still higher ones and in this way only but we cannot escape law or rise above it entirely nothing but the all can escape law and that because the all is law itself may require the powers usually attributed to the gods of men and there are countless ranks of being in the great hierarchy of life whose being and power transcends even that of the highest masters among men to a degree unthinkable by mortals but even the highest master and the highest being must bow to the law and be as nothing in the eye of the all so that even these highest beings whose powers exceed even those attributed to both men and gods if even these are bound by and are subservient to law then imagine the presumption of mortal man of our race and grade when he dares to consider the laws of nature as quote unquote unreal visionary and illusory because he happens to be able to grasp the truth that the laws of are mental in nature which the act, uh, which the all intends to be governing laws are not to be defiled or argued away so long as the university endures will they endure for the university exists 
by virtue of these laws which form its framework and which held it together. The hermetic principle of mentalism, while explaining the true nature of the universe upon the principle that all is mental, does not change the scientific conceptions of the universe, life, or evolution. In fact, science merely corroborates the hermetic teachings. The latter merely teaches that the nature of the universe is mental, while modern science has taught that it is material or of late, that it is energy at the least analysis. The hermetic teachings have no fault to find with Herbert Spencer's basic principles which postulates the existence of an infinite and eternal realm. Um, Sorry, I lost my place. Hold on. I think I just skipped accidentally. Okay. The hermetic teachings have no fault to find with Herbert Spencer's basic principle, which postulates the existence of an infinite and and eternal energy from which all things proceed. In fact, the Hermetics recognized in Spencer's philosophy has the highest... I'm sorry. In fact, the Hermetics recognize in Spencer's philosophy the highest outside statement of the workings of the natural laws that have ever been promulgated and they believe Spencer to have been a reincarnation of an ancient philosopher who dwelt in ancient Egypt thousands of years ago and who later incarnated as Heraclitus, the Grecian philosopher who lived before Common Era 500. And they regard his statement of the infinite and eternal energy as directly in the line of the Hermetic teachings always with the addition of their own doctrine that energy is the energy of the mind and the all with the master key of the hermetic philosophy the student of spencer will be able to unlock many doors of the inner philosophical conceptions of the great english philosopher whose work shows the results of the preparation of his previous incarnations His teachings regarding evolution and rhythm are in almost perfect agreement with the Hermetic teachings regarding the principle of rhythm. So the student of Hermetics need not lay aside any of the cherished scientific views regarding the universe. All he is asked to do is grasp the underlying principle of the all is mind, the universe is mental, held in the mind of all. He will find that the other six of seven principles will fit into his scientific knowledge and will serve to bring out obscure points and throw light in dark corners. This is not to be wondered at when we realize the influence of the hermetic thought of the early philosophers of Greece, upon whose foundations of thought and theories of modern science largely rest. The acceptance of the first hermetic principle, mentalism, is the only great point of difference between modern science and hermetic students. And science is gradually moving towards the hermetic position in its groping in the dark for a way out of the labyrinth into which it has wandered in its search for reality. The purpose of this lesson is to impress upon the minds of our students the fact that, to all intents and purposes, the universe and its laws and its phenomena are just as real so far as man is concerned, or they would be 
under the hypotheses of materialism or energism. Under any hypothesis, the university in its outer aspect is changing, ever flowing, and transitory, and therefore devoid of substantiality and reality. But note the other pole of the truth. Under the same hypothesis, we are compelled to act and live as if the fleeting things were real and substantial. With this difference always between the various hypotheses, that under the old views, mental power was ignored as a natural force, while under mentalism it becomes the greatest natural force. And this one difference revolutionizes life to those who understand the principle and its resulting laws and practice. So, finally, students all grasp the advantage of mentalism and learn to know, use, and apply the laws resulting therefrom. But do not yield to the temptation which, as the Kaiba Lion states, overcomes the half-wise and Cause, and which causes them to be hypnotized by the apparently un, the apa- unparent unreality of things. The consequence being that they wander about like dream people, dwelling in a world of dreams, ignoring the practical work and life of man, the end being that they are broken against the rocks and torn asunder by the elements by reason of their folly. Rather follow the example of the wise, which the same authority states, use law against laws, the higher against the lower, and by the art of alchemy transmute that which is undesirable into that which is worthy and thus triumph. Following the authority, let us avoid the half-wisdom, which is folly, which ignores the truth that mastery consists not in abnormal dreams, visions, and fantastical imaginations of being, or living, the fantastic imaginings or living, but is using the higher forces against the lower, escaping the pains of the lower planes, it's hard to say, escaping the pains of the lower planes by vibrating on the higher. Remember always, student, that transmutation, not presumptuous denial, is the weapons of the master. The above quotations are from the Kaibalion and are worthy of being committed to memory by the student. Okay, um, where was I, darn it? Oh, it's so strange. I just, it's like I'm feeling this bombardment of energy right now. I'm trying to get through this, and I just lost my place. This is so strange. any hypothesis the universe in its outer aspect is changing ever flowing transitory oh this is so strange all right let me just read this last little bit And Andrew Bartz has just wrote me an email. It says, returning energy. That's so weird. It just popped up on my screen. (laughs) I wonder if he means returning energy to sender when the sender is bad. Like, meaning it's bad. This is so strange. Wow, you guys, this book, I just, I feel like it's throwing me out of my body when I read it. It's the third week that I was 
fine and wide awake when I sat down to read this. And then a few words into it, I'm just like, whoa, and I can't even, almost like I can't pay attention. And I feel like not only am I reading the book that's in my hand, which is basically on my tablet on the screen, but I also I feel like I'm reading a higher existence plane. Like I'm reading two books at once is what I feel like. And that the higher one has different words in it than the lower one. And I feel like it's messing with me a little bit. Like, I'm just like, I keep going back and forth between the two texts. That's what I feel like right now. It's very, very weird feeling. And I just keep hoping that I don't just like fall asleep and snore while, <laughs> while holding this thing in my hand. It's so weird. Anyway, let me reread uh, this last part of this paragraph. Because I feel like, um, I think this is about where I left off. Then I like, it's like I literally started to fall asleep for like half a second. And then I woke up and I'm like, I'm totally lost. It's so strange. Phew. Lots of higher vibrations with this one. All right. Um, rather follow the example of the wise, which the same authority states. Use law against laws and higher against the lower. By the art of alchemy, you transmute that which is undesirable into that which is worthy and thus triumph. Following the authority, let us avoid the half wisdom, which is folly, which ignores the truth that mastery consists not in abnormal dreams, dreams, visions, and fantastical imaginings or living but in using the higher forces against the lower escaping the pains of the lower planes by vibrating on the higher remember always student that transmutation and not presumptuous denial is the weapon of the master the above quotations are from the Kaibalion and are worthy of being committed to memory by the student. We do not live in a world of dreams, but in an universe which, while relative, is real so far as our lives and actions are concerned. Our business in the universe is not to deny its existence but to live using the laws of I'm sorry using the laws to rise from lower to higher living on doing the best that we can under the circumstances arising each day and living so far as is possible to our best ideas our biggest ideas and ideals. The true meaning of life is not known to men on this plane, if indeed any, but the highest authorities and our own intuitions teach us that we will make no mistake in living up to the best that is in us so far as is possible and realizing the universal tendency in the same direction in spite of apparent evidence to the contrary. We are all on the path. And the roads lead upward ever with frequent resting places. So they say, read the message of the Kaiba Lion and follow the example of the wise avoiding the mistake of the half-wise who perish by reason of their folly. Alright, there it is. Um, that was really deep, guys. I'm not going to read anymore because even though we're less than 40 minutes into it, I'm, I mean, I'm being pushed out of my body as I'm reading this. 
I can't explain. Is there one in the room with me? Nope. Muscle testing says no. So it's not like, you know, someone's trying to push me on my body. I just, this energy is so overwhelming and intense from this book. And I'm just like reading an online version. Can you imagine what it feels like to hold this in your hand and read it out loud? I think there's some higher truths together with this. I feel like there's maybe spiritual and ascended masters helping me to get it and understand it, but I think they're transmitting energy through my words. Am I right about this? I'm getting a yes. Is there more than four masters of light working through me right now? No. Is there more than three? Yes. Is there four? So yeah, there are four masters of light working through me right now when I'm speaking about the deeper metaphysics from the Kabbalion. Wow, it's just crazy. So, this is a shorter episode than usual. I hope that you can um, go back and listen to the whole uh, chapter again in the event that you were confused or um, or maybe it just like went over your head. I know for me, it's just it seemed really deep and profound and part of it seemed super easy and okay, you're repeating yourself and then part of it kind of felt like um, even though the words themselves are simple, there's a really deep truth there and I feel like I'm on the verge of grasping it. I might just go back and listen to myself saying these words. I don't know. I mean, like, I know what this book is doing to me when I'm reading it. First time I read it, I think I was like a third of the way through it. And all of a sudden the book stopped making sense to me. And I feel like it's a trick of the masters to help the uninitiated, um, to either understand a text or to stop reading it until they're going to read it in the future which will be the time in which they finally understand the text. I don't know. It's a very odd feeling that I've got. Um, there's several books like in my life that I danced around like I thought, I better read that. And then it took years and years before I could read it. Things held me back. You know, um, and then all of a sudden it was easy. And here it is, here's the book. It comes my way for very cheap or it comes my way through a friend or a gift or it's in a hostel and it's a buy one or I mean not buy one, leave one, take one situation. Like, wow, I haven't thought about this lasting prophecy for years. All of a sudden I had an obsessive, um, obsessive thought about it constantly. I have to read this book. I have to read it again. And then I took a little trip and wouldn't you know it, the one hostel I chose to go to, here it is, Celestian Prophecy, right there on the shelf, in the leave a book, take a book. And they didn't care if you took three and left none, because it's not their books, they didn't pay for it, they just have the shelf and allow the travelers to do what they will with the books. Right, so I've had this happen a couple times now. Books I thought about, books I wondered about, and I'd show up somewhere and here it is right on the shelf. How weird is that? And here it is again, you know, just, I was looking up a different kind of book or a different topic and out of nowhere, a few weeks ago, the Kaiba Lion showed up in my energy field again. This is a book my, my husband used to have. And I remember reading it and I remember like reading it and having zero clue as to what I just read. So I put it down, go eat, go nap, go do whatever, come back and read it again. And the same thing. And I read it the same words over and over and over again. And I'm pretty sure I read the whole book, but I don't remember at all. And now here it is again. I'm reading the book and it's popping me out of my body. And I feel like I'm going up to a different plane of existence and I'm reading a different book. And it's like somehow my mind is overlaying 
the two books together and side by side. It's very, very strange. And, um, and with that, I don't know, man. I feel really strange right now. Honestly, I, my, my face just started hurting. Like I got punched in the, um, bone just below my eye. I feel like I was just punched in the eye. (laughs) And it wasn't like this when I started reading the book 44 minutes ago. Or at all today, at all. I mean, now I just, I don't know where I just, my eye feels really swollen and really sore, like I just got punched in the eye. Seriously, I'm wondering, was I just abducted? No, no. uh -uh. So let me ask, I'm going to do some muscle testing on this, because this this book is freaking me out a little bit. (laughs) God, am I connected with you? Of course I am always. God, am I being popped out of my body from solar winds? or cosmic radiation, those answers are no. All right, is it the book itself? Yeah, the book itself is just popping me out of my body. And is it so that I can learn on a higher plane of existence? Yeah. Oh my God, okay, this is what God is saying. The Kaiba Lion, this book is a portal for the men who are ready to receive the information. They will leave their body while reading the book here in the material plane, you pop into a different dimension, you're surrounded by masters of light, not only the three initiates who wrote it, but other masters of light, and you're surrounded by angels in a realm of pure white light. And this is what he's telling me directly, so I'm like relaying it to you guys. What else? And you're hearing the higher truths as you are reading the lower truths and all right so okay basically he's saying it's very very hard for you to read what you just wrote when you hear this <laughs> or I mean read what I, oh my god I can't even say it. I, mean, I can't even talk it's it's hard for you to understand what you just read as you're reading it because you're like on another plane of existence when you read it and it's like a portal to another world another plane of existence Oh, really? 33 times. Okay, so he, God just said, for any man to understand this book, you have to read it 33 times before you can bring to the material world all of the divine principles contained therein on the other level of existence. The other, you know, when the portal brings you up there. And you're reading that version of the book as well as reading this version of the book. It it takes you 33 passes reading this thing 33 times to, he's saying now, fully anchor in to this plane of existence, your newfound knowledge. Well, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. Like, I'm like burning up right now. Suddenly I am very, very hot. Tons of energy pouring through my body right now. I don't know if you could feel it from me. I'm just like really out of it suddenly out of nowhere. Just (laughs) I felt great when I started reading it. Now I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I'm burning up. Like I need to change clothes, maybe lay down, go to sleep to bring the energy from the higher plane into my subtle energy bodies and then eventually have it like trickle down into my physical body and then become a new awareness in my mind, including new insights over the next week. And that's what God's telling me that I have to do. It's what I think we should all do. Oh my God. And if you feel like, you know, going to Gutenberg.org and reading the book, or at least reading this chapter, or I'll, you know, read up until this point with me, and then next week I'll come back, of course, and read the next part of this book. Um, man, it's like super deep, like, 
And it doesn't seem like it, right? You know, just the words itself. It's like, okay, sure, that makes sense, sure. The mind, the mental, it's all, okay, the universe is mental. I get it. It just seems like, all right, cool. You know, we're basically living in a um, holographic projection of the mind of God. Otherwise known as like a matrix, right? And it's not real, and yet paradoxically, it's 100% real. If it wasn't real, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be aware of ourselves. We wouldn't have an awareness of each other or the solidity of the physical material objects around us. (sighs) (laughs) I swear to God, the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. (laughs) It's another paradox of this universe. Um... I don't even know who I was surrounded by, you guys. I felt like there were men in white robes and with long, flowy beards and white, wild hair. I mean, not like Einstein, but I, there were some people up there. I don't know. I was just there. And I feel like when I was up there, I was wearing a white robe with them. It's like a very holy place, a very... And you know what? Actually, now that I remember this... The first time I read it, I, the same thing happened to me. I was kicked out of my body and I went up there. I feel like I I was sitting on the floor in front of my bookshelf. I had like a little reading area and a little rug. And I was sitting on the rug. And I remember reading this book before. And I think that it just knocked me out and I just fell asleep. And my husband's like, why are you sleeping over there? You should just go upstairs, go to bed go take a nap for an hour. I'll watch the kids. And I'm like, you know, when I came to and he said that to me, I'm like, what? Like, no, I was reading the Kaiba lion and I just fell asleep. And I don't know. I I remember him kind of smiling or smirking at that, like kind of like a knowing look like, "Mm -hmm." like maybe it happened to him, but then we never discussed it. And yet here it is right now again. I'm just being popped on out of my body. You're like, bye. Let's go see the Masters of Light. All right. It'd be crazy if you guys are listening to me and you're like falling asleep during this and then you're waking up going, wait, what? Masters of Light? What is she talking about? Right? Like, it would be cool to find out that you guys are also being popped out of your body. (laughs) And if it starts to happen and you're driving and listening to this, maybe you should just you know, pull over the side of the road to hear the rest of it or wait for your lunch break and don't drive and listen to it just in case, because I don't know if it's affecting you the same way it's affecting me, but this is, um, this happens to me quite often where I just, I'll be like in the middle of a sentence. I'll be even like walking on a sacred site. Like when I went to Puma Pungo, um, which is the only site in Ecuador built to honor the goddess, which I didn't know at the time. I just went and I was just, my goal was to find any stragglers that, you know, weren't fully crossed over to the other side. Anyone who died there that needs upliftment and, you know, for me to open a portal and send them through to the other side, you know, (laughs) I mean, I I just went there specifically to help uh, anyone who was stuck in this plane of existence. There were a few, not many, just a few people. But I remember kind of like walking and then feeling really strange and being really angry if anyone spoke to me. Because I I went into like this deep meditative state while walking. And there was a couple times in which I felt like I just left my body while I'm at the sacred site and then I came back and it's like what 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 were you saying to me you know (laughs) just asking you know my kids I was with my um my son and, and he was just like you know he'd say something and I'm like what like and I get kind of mad because I didn't know what was happening. It happened four or five times when I was walking at Pum Pum This is like three years ago. Almost three years ago now. About, about two and a half years ago. And just like wild. It was a wild place to be. And I can't wait to go back. I, someday I will go back over there and 
<laughs> after, you know, post-COVID. You know, if the apocalypse doesn't happen and we all die before <laughs> that. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I joke, but I, I, I hope to God that I'm, you know, that I'm just being facetious and it's not real and everything will be get, getting back to normal soon. And I hope that our money does not fall and that, you know, or if it does, it's replaced immediately with something else. Or that maybe, I, I'm honestly hoping for some kind of basic income so that everybody is safe and on the, a level and even playing field. You know, make everyone in all of humanity even and equal and, you know, financially it would be great. I mean, not only for me, but for everybody. You know, I see this little lady, um, Narcissa, and she comes to say, hey, and I hadn't seen her in like three weeks. I was getting worried about her. She showed up today in, in front of our um, door. Yesterday we bought choclo from her, you know, the giant Incan corn we bought from her. She cooked it and it's like all warm in the bag, you know, when she brings it. So we have to kind of keep it out for like an hour for it to calm, you know, cool down. And then we put it in the fridge and over the next week we just, you know, fry it up with some scrambled eggs in the morning or just add a little salt and heat it up, toast a little, a little bit of olive oil. It's pretty good. Um, it's kind of bland, but has a lot of protein. Anyway, she shows up today and asked if she could charge her phone. And we were so scared of coronavirus. We, we put an extension cord out the window and then shut the window like, here, go ahead. And she's speaking to us through the window. It was ridiculous. We're like, we don't feel too good today. So we don't want to get you sick and we don't want to get sick from you, you know? And she's like, okay, it was good to see her though. I'm glad she's okay. But, um, anyway, there we go. I don't know. I, I hope the Kaiba lion, I'm kind of hoping it's affecting you the way it's affecting me. Cause I'm just like, there's some deeper truths. And well, this is my second time reading it. So, oh my God, 31 more times. I've got to read this to get it. But hey, maybe I'll be able to manifest red licorice in my hand at the end of it. <laughs> maybe I'll be able to float. You know, I love to float. I want to, you know, fly around my room. Maybe that will happen after I read it 31 times. <laughs> you know, the cool little parlor tricks, you know. <laughs> of the Ascended Masters. I'm just kidding. They're not parlor tricks. But once you get to a certain level, I guess you understand all of the... Um, you get to understand all of the uh, real metaphysics or the, the principles, the working principles of the universe. I like the idea of taking the higher and impressing it upon the lower and raising your vibration so that the lower does not affect you any longer. Super, super helpful after like some of the things that we discussed in the first hour, right? So anyway, well, with that, uh, gosh, I'm going to go and contemplate this again and again <laughs> over the next uh, I'm going to be just thinking about this for weeks so I'll be back tomorrow you guys with all unique and original programming just like always and I have no idea what tomorrow's show is going to be maybe it's a channeling I don't know we'll see I didn't do any channeling last week so probably we'll have to play catch up and do one or two this week so um yeah, that's it. I want to thank you guys for listening to the show and your ongoing continued support and your love. I love you guys too so much. I'm so grateful that we're on this ascension journey together and we are all hashtag soul tribe and hashtag soul family. Use those hashtags on both Twitter as well as Instagram in order to find me. And that's how we're going to find each other because we all, we all chose to come here together and experience moving from the third plane of existence or the third dimensional plane of existence to the fifth dimensional plane of existence. And we've already moved up, but I feel like every day we get a little bit closer, even to the seventh dimension. I just feel like we're moving up, up, up still. Do you guys feel it? The energy has been absolutely wild. Tons of tinnitus 
and but different tones all day long I've had different tones every few hours it's a different tone so um that's part of it being abducted I have have marks on my hand that's another part of it <laughs> for me I don't know if hopefully it's not part of it for you because it's, it's kind of a freaky thing that keeps happening but and then now just hopping up into another plane of existence while trying to read a book to you guys <sighs> You know, like I said before, welcome to my world. (laughs) I'm here to share my world with you in the hopes that it helps you and your world as well. Anyway, I love you guys and thank you so much. And also thank you to those of you who have liked, shared, subscribed, and forwarded this to other people who are also interested in spiritual things. Thank you so much. I'm signing off now with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension until next time guys peace metaphysical soul speak is run on sponsors and listener support This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.